Welcome to GV247.tv, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello and welcome to this week's teaching in our Spiritual Deception series, which uncovers and explains many of the wrong and even deceptive teachings that are circulating Christendom. Now this week we're looking at what's known as the Word of Faith movement. It's also known as name it and claim it, and even more colloquially, blab it and grab it, which really demonstrates how far from Christianity this movement is. Now we're looking at this today again with teacher, author and pastor Anton Bosch, because this is another one of those errors that has taken over whole swathes of the church. It is massive. And in one sentence, it is a form of witchcraft at its most basic. It is faith in faith rather than faith in God. So, Anton, would you give us a, a good definition, please? Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Yeah, that's a, a difficult one to, to define clearly, but uh, let's try. So, so word of faith, it's also known as word faith or, or simply faith. Um, it basically teaches that Christians can access the power of faith through speech. So access the power of faith. So faith is a force. Faith has power. And the way that you unleash that power is through your words. So that's why you have the idea of word of faith. So speaking a word based, uh, which then actuates the power of faith and then brings about um, a result. And the uh, results are in two main areas uh, in health and wealth. Um, so uh, speaking uh, health into your body um, and speaking uh, prosperity or wealth into your, uh, into your bank balance. Um, so it's, it's uh, based on the idea uh, that God created uh, through his word, which is true. God spoke and the, and the worlds came into being. Um, but then what they say, they, they make two mistakes from, from there. The first is that God used faith to actuate his words or that his words actuated faith. So God acted on faith, used faith to create. Um, now, we'll maybe address that a little bit more later, but uh, God does not need faith. God is the object of faith. Uh, God does not exercise faith. We put exercise our faith in him. Um, and so the idea of God and faith um, in the mix of creation is, is nonsense. God just spoke and his word uh, created, and he even now upholds all things by the word of his power. But then uh, the second problem with that is that we are we then become little gods, so, so that we are made in the image of God. And so they say, well, then we're little gods. So God has creative power in his words, and therefore we have creative power in our words. And um, I'm just short-circuiting the whole fall of Adam and then the cross and all of that. And of course, they, 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 the whole way they explain that at the cross is, uh, is aberrant, is uh, very heretical, um, but I'm, you know, we, we, we don't want to get too deeply uh, into that. Um, and so uh, some of the terms that you'll find often, and you've already heard of many of the terms in, in, the, in the few minutes that we've been on, uh, decree and declare. Uh, so whenever you see somebody saying, I decree and I declare, um, that is word of faith. They're, um, they, they're speaking creatively, positive confession. Um, and, and you must remember also that um, uh, although they don't speak about this often, there is, the, the reverse is also true. So your word is creative, they say, but your words are also destructive. Um, and so you can have negative confession. So if you get up in the morning and you're not feeling very well, and you say to someone, I'm not feeling well, pray for me, that is a negative confession. You're making yourself sick because you're saying to your body, I am not well. Um, and, you know, the, the same applies to, to money and so on. Um, now, um, this is it's, and this is important because uh, there are many, many books on the subject, and very few of them separate word of faith from prosperity. Now, uh, and and I'm sure that if if this is the first time you've listened to us, um, you'll say, "Well, it is the same thing." No, it is not the same thing. Uh, word of faith has a, a different uh, root. 
and it operates on different principles. There is a different theology behind it, but it has the same result. It works towards the same goals as the prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel uses different techniques, different theology to arrive at the same, uh, same result. And so what happens today is that uh, most word of faith preachers or prosperity preachers mix these two ideas and they use both of these ideas uh, to, um, for, in their theology and in order to achieve the sort of results that they, um, they, they want to uh, achieve. So, so they are different roots, different theology, uh, but the same purpose. And on the surface, they look like the same thing, but in fact, they're not. Thank you, Anton. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll leave uh, the prosperity gospel part of it uh, till the next programme, if that's OK. Um, you know, Anton, just listening to you saying these phrases again, I, I cannot, I, a, a shiver goes through me. I cannot stress enough to those of you watching how closely affiliated this is with witchcraft. It really is. And I think you'll, this will open out as we go on. Um, and the other thing, Anton, it's strange when I was preparing for this today, um, and, you know, just I think you and I spoke about this earlier. We, we kind of know this particular subject inside out and we can take it a wee bit for granted. Um, and it's important that you, dear people watching this, have a thorough understanding so you can avoid it. But the one thing yeah, I forgot, Anton, that you mentioned there is the, the negative side of it. And if I could have um, if I could have a five pound note for every time that I have said something where somebody has replied and say, oh, don't don't say that you'll bring it upon yourself. You know, so just saying, actually, I don't feel very good today or I'm not feel, feeling very well. And they'll jump on you and say, don't speak the negative words. This is witchcraft. So we know uh, that the, in its current form, um, the word of faith has been around probably what, about 150 years or so. So that's in its current form. So, Anton, would you tell us a little bit about its history, please? The, the history goes, in fact, goes right back to the New Testament in the sense of um, um, Gnosticism. Um, but I'm not going to get into that because it gets a little technical. But uh, in, in Gnosticism, you, they separate the flesh from spirit. And, um, and, and uh, these same ideas are, are present here. Uh, but the more recent history in the 1800s uh, starts really with uh, Swedenborg. Um, and then Phineas Quimby, um, and these guys were um, uh, witches. They, um, they, they communicated with the dead, and um, so th this really comes from, from hell itself. And then, of course, Mary Baker Eddy, Mary Baker Eddy, uh, science and health with the key to the scriptures, um, which is uh, Christian science, uh, not to be confused with Scientology, uh, but Christian science who have exactly the same ideas. Um, now, uh, E.W. Kenyon, and he lived in, from 1867 through 1948, uh, so at the beginning of the last century, uh, he is really uh, uh, labeled as the originator of the modern version of Word of Faith teaching. So he took the idea of Swedenborg, Quimby, and Mary Baker Eddy, and he Christianized them and uh, sold them to, uh, to the Christian church. And then uh, Kenyon's principal disciple was Kenneth Hagen Sr. Um, uh, and of course, his son continues the, uh, the legacy. Um, and Hagen um, plagiarized a lot of Kenyon's work and um, pro propagated and really popularized uh, the idea in the middle of the, of the last century. Um, now, uh, Hagen's principal disciple was Kenneth Copeland, um, and of course his wife Gloria. And today, um, or up till recently, they were the um, unofficial leaders of the Word of Faith movement. They were really the, the pinnacle. Um, but, but there are, you know, and, and to give you a list of, of names would be, um, it would take forever because there, there are probably hundreds. Um, but the, the, the ones that are really well known are people like Joel Osteen. Um, now, um, Joel Osteen, uh, let, let me come back to, to Osteen, um, but Benny Hinn, uh, Frederick K. Price, who's recently died, lived in uh, L.A. here close to, to us, uh, Jerry Savelle, Cre Creflo Dollar. Uh, I, I can never say his name without smiling because, you know, he has the right kind of, the right name. Uh, Joseph Prince, Joyce Meyer, 
Um, and uh, th these all um, hold to the basic principles of Word of Faith, uh, but they all have their own little spin on it. So, so each one has uh, repackaged it a little bit differently, uh, but it's still the same, the same thing. Now, um, TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network, has probably done more than anyone else to propagate these ideas throughout the world. Um, I, I remember when I was still traveling to Nigeria, uh, probably 15 years ago, um, you could go anywhere in the remotest parts of um, Nigeria and you would see the, uh, and you would you would get the local government station on the television, and you would get TBN, those two stations, and sometimes CNN. Um, and so the the, the doctrine went into uh, Nigeria. Nigeria really uh, uh, caught onto this in a big big way. Um, they they refined it and adapted it, uh, mixed it a little bit with ancestral worship uh, in in the African context. Um, and um, there are um, thousands, uh, literally thousands of word of faith preachers in Nigeria. And uh, when they exhausted that market, and it is a, a money making business, when they exhausted that market, they began to spread further and further. And they have now permeated the whole of Africa. And these Nigerian preachers have also come to Europe and to America and to the West. Um, and so the, the biggest, while the whole thing really came out of America, the, the probably the biggest driving force for it at the moment is um, are, the, are the Nigerian uh, uh, preachers. Now, um, wh when I mentioned um, Joel Osteen, um, th there is a, a parallel stream. So remember, we said that Word of Faith really addresses money and health. Um, but there, there is another stream that flows from Norman Vincent Peale, um, uh, How to Make Friends and Influence People. Um, and then Robert Schuller, who is now uh, passed on, and then through to Joel Osteen. And that's sort of the most direct line. And there are others in the same, uh, same uh, mold, but not, not as, 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 as clear. Uh, when you look at the Norman Vincent Peale, Robert Schuller, and Joel Osteen, what they emphasize is positive thinking about yourself. Um, uh, obviously, they, the, the money and the health thing also comes into it, but it's feeling good about myself, and I must make a positive confession concerning who I am. I am the greatest. I have this great potential. I can be like God. I can do all of these, these wonderful things. Um, and so um, the, 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 it's, 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 as you can see, it's a little bit different. It's a repackaging of it, uh, but it's the same, uh, the same basic idea. And obviously, this is uh, contrary to scripture. Also, uh, one of the earlier uh, variants on the thing was um, uh, Marilyn Carruthers, um, prison to praise. Um, so you don't confess that, you know, if you, you just need to say everything is good, you need to just worship God and your problems will go away. Uh, that's a subtle variation on, on the theme. So there are many variations on the theme, uh, many uh, um, slightly different packages, uh, but it's all the same basic idea. Thank you, Anton. Um, I want to ask you an odd question. Have you ever visited the Vatican? No, I've not. No, okay. So you'll put that on your bucket list of things to do, I would imagine. Um, my husband and I, Stuart and I, went to visit a few years ago. Um, we're, we were visiting, um, our son was actually a missionary at the time, so we were visiting him. And off we went, uh, crossed the country to, to Rome. Uh, because we heard that uh, in the year that we were there, they had a door in the Vatican that if you went through this door, you could be forgiven all your sins. And we mm. had to see this. And remember, I'm saying all of this um, with, a, with a very wry smile on the other side of my face. Um, but one of the things that really struck us, with, it, was, it was just appalling. But the thing that stuck, struck us was how incredibly rich and lavish and it was just amazing. The marble and the gold and the, the place was just dripping with riches. And, you know, we were watching little old ladies going up the steps on their knees and bowing to, you know, uh, sarcophagi and things like this. It was it really is appalling. Um, and I, I, the way I looked at it was. I didn't want to pronounce on it until I'd actually visited. It was it was really appalling. Well, 
You may have seen photographs of the inside of it, but I visited another place which was even more lavish than inside the Vatican. And that's almost hard to believe if you saw it. And it was TBN. And it was the oddest thing, I've maybe mentioned it before, um, I was speaking at a conference in California and one of the hosts uh, took me a run by TBN. I, I was really looking forward to seeing the place and it looked pretty empty. So we, we actually drove in and we stopped the car. This was like something out of um, another zone, another time dimension, because we walked through the doors. There was nobody there. There was nobody anywhere in this massive building. And we had freedom to walk about it. And I had my phone, my camera phone running. And so there is some very amateur um, phone footage on, um, on our other ministry website, BethelCommunications.tv. Um, have a wee look at that or go to YouTube and have a look. It was absolutely lavish. Now, we're going to be talking about this. I'll probably repeat the story when we talk about the prosperity gospel. But everything in there was to do with this positive thinking, word of faith. And the thing that is so appalling is that, as you say, we see it in Nigeria, but it's, it's really, really huge. But all over the world, it tends to be more disenfranchised people, people who are um, in poverty and in greater need that follow these people. Uh, those uh, people who are in need for, um, for, for healing, healing from some really serious illnesses. And uh, they think that actually confessing these things, these words with their, their mouths, I am well, when they're not well. Is going to make it happen. And the reason I talked about TBN is they see the lavish lifestyle that many of these leaders have. Joel Austin and all the rest of it. Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn. Kenneth Copeland bragging about his um, having to have a second jetliner. Um, it is appalling. It is absolutely appalling. These people are absolutely rolling in money. And as I say, we'll speak about that this in the next programme. And the followers think that they could do the same thing. But we need to make it clear, dear viewer, this is nothing to do with Christianity. It is already out there in the world. In fact, I've done a couple of programs on this, taking it right to the root, its occult root, and, and I hate it. I detest it. If you are involved with this in any way, please, please just drop us an email, info at globalvision.tv, and we can point you in direction for some more information to absolutely prove to you that this is nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If, however, you really do profess to be a Christian, the answer is all in the Bible. It's there. So, Anton, why don't we run through the sort of questions that a person ought to ask. So one of the questions we must ask is, are we indeed uh, little gods? Um, are we now? Uh, will we ever be? And of course, there is no scripture that says that we are little gods. Um, th this, is a, um, this is a heresy which the um, Mormons preach and uh, which is common in uh, Hinduism. Uh, that we, um, we, we evolve, we um, are reincarnated at higher and higher levels, that's if we're good in the previous life, until we become another little god. Uh, this is a, this is a uh, demonic uh, idea. And remember that the, the idea of being like God came from Lucifer to begin with. I will be like the Most High. <clears throat> we are not little gods. We are human beings. We are fallen, and if we are saved, we are saved by grace. Um, and uh, we will be like Jesus in the sense that we will have his, uh, his attributes, but we will never be him. We will never be God. We will never be little gods. We will never be angels. None of those things. Uh, we are simply uh, human beings uh, made out of the dust of the earth. Uh, we contain in this uh, earthen vessel the treasure um, of the life of God. And, um, and, and, and th this is the problem, is that it, it's an uh, exalted view of man. And really what we're doing in the process uh, in this whole thing is that we're elevating ourselves to the level of God. And we're saying that we have the same power, the same authority as God has. But at the same time, what we're doing is that we're demoting God 
And as Romans chapter 1 says, we're making him like unto a man. Um, and so God becomes our messenger boy um, who simply does what we tell him. If we apply the uh, principles of the word of faith, then God has to do what I tell him to do. Uh, God is bound by these laws, they say. Um, and, so, uh, and so God becomes a man. So man becomes God. God becomes a man. And you can see that this is, this is heresy. This is blasphemy of the worst, worst kind. Um, and, uh, we touched on the idea that uh, did God uh, create by the word of faith? Well, uh, simply read the record. Read uh, the first few chapters of Genesis. Um, it, it doesn't speak about faith. It doesn't say that God used faith. Uh, nowhere where it speaks about uh, creation, whether it's in uh, John 1 um, or, or anywhere else, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, doesn't speak about God applying faith. God simply spoke and these things came into being. God does not need to believe, as I've said earlier, God is uh, the object of faith. And this is, the, this is the important point, which I'm going to come back to in a, in a moment or two. Um, so does faith operate according to fixed laws um, that, 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 that must be obeyed? So, so if I do certain things, must certain things follow? Well, no, because God is sovereign. I am not the boss of God. Um, and, and of course, what they do is they say, well, God is bound by his word. God says he's going to prosper us. Therefore, God is obligated to prosper us. Uh, God said that, that he will heal us. Therefore, God is, is bound by his own laws uh, that he must heal us. Now, again, it's, a, it's simply based on a wrong reading of the scripture. The scripture, nowhere does it say that God promises us prosperity. And we'll deal with this when we talk about the prosperity thing. Nowhere does it say that God guarantees healing for us. I believe in divine healing. I do believe that God uh, does heal um, and, and can heal, but he does not heal on demand. Um, he, 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 is, he is not my messenger boy. He is, he is a sovereign God, and I can appeal to him and ask him to do things, um, but whether he does them or not, that, that is his sovereign uh, choice. So, so faith does not operate according to uh, rules. Uh, th this is not a transactional relationship. Our relationship with God is not transactional, where we do certain things, therefore God must do other things. Uh, it is transactional in the sense that, that God tells us to do certain things. He tells us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells us to repent, and we must do those things in order to gain the, the blessings that of, of sonship and so on that he extends to us. But our relationship with God is not transactional. We cannot say, uh, God, I have done this, whether it's giving money in the prosperity thing or whether it is um, um, speaking the right words. Therefore, God is now obligated to do uh, what I have to, what I say. So, so the, the real problem is a wrong understanding of who we are and a wrong understanding of who God is. And then, of course, a wrong understanding of what faith is all about. And um, it, it, it really is the easiest um, heresy to discount uh, simply because it's not in the Word. If you just read the Bible, uh, you, you will not find this anywhere. It, is, it, is, it does not exist in the Word of God. Amen. You know, I've heard, um, I've heard scriptures being twisted in such a way to, uh, to misquote, which of course does happen. I think it's in John, John 10, 34, the Lord Jesus Christ says, um, you have heard it say that you are God's. But of course, he's quoting from, oh my goodness, um, he's quoting from the Psalms. He's quoting from oh. Psalm 82. And I think in Psalm 82, 6, this is a, a very, very interesting scripture, very interesting, because the writer, I think this was a psalm by Asaph, but um, it is God speaking, and he is not talking to men, because um, he's saying, I have said, you're God's. And all of you are children of the Most High. God is speaking to others who are in heaven with them. And, and it's proven by the next line, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Um, it's, a, it's a controversial scripture. We'll leave that one to the side at the moment. And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ is quoting that. And again, they just they take the scripture totally out of context to say that this is a good thing to be called a little God with a small g. 
And you're right, Anton, it's right back to the it's right back to the garden, isn't it? It's the same old lies. Did God really say? Well, actually, in this case, he most certainly did not. So yes. it's faith in faith. Um, is it a creative force? Can we say words to make things happen? Well, we can't. We certainly cannot do it. Um, and as I say, this is actually the very basis of, of witchcraft. Uh, power in the words. And um, again, Antoine, from your background in Africa, I'm sure you've seen this very often, I would imagine, uh, with what's commonly known as witch doctors. That's just a simple term where they can actually put curses on people who receive the curse by dint of the fact that they're terrified. So if somebody points at you, makes a sign of the evil eye and says, you're going to die in 10 days or you're going to whatever it actually can happen because the person is so terrified that um that they can actually bring it about themselves just through fear so it's it's really not very different to that and as you say it's not in the scripture um could you just just maybe finish off we'll just uh, uh, we look at um hebrews 11 what faith produces yeah, um, you, you raise an interesting point, uh, Deborah. Uh, we we do have access to enormous power um, within the occult uh, to do things, um, and it seems that we have a lot of power in the in the mind. Um, I, I think those of us who are older will remember a guy called Yuri Geller mm -hmm. who used to bend teaspoons by just focusing on them. And, and I, don't, I don't believe that that was fake. I believe that that was real. Yep. Um, I, I believe that there, is, that there are powers locked up within us. Um, Adam was a very powerful individual um, to begin with, but let's not get sidetracked on that. Um, the, the, the problem is that uh, it is not God's power. It is, it is either soulish power, human power, or it is demonic power, but it is not God's power. Um, I, I think that there is something to positive thinking. I think that, uh, and, and we know that there are people who have psychosomatic illnesses. There are people who, who, who wish themselves to be sick. You say, well, that's crazy. Well, of course it's crazy, but, but, but they do. And, and so they sick because they want to be sick. Um, so, so we do have some kind of control um, to some extent. Uh, as far as those things are concerned, um, but the same thing applies to, um, to 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 money. You know, if you if you if particularly if you're in sales or something like that, and you have a positive outlook and you're already going, you you can you can make more money than the guy who's negative and saying, well, you know. Uh, but but this is not the power of God. This is this is human, soulish, earthly, and and demonic power, and that's the that's the that's the problem. So, so faith does not create miracles. Faith does not create miracles. And I know, and I, I, we, we don't have the time, but, you know, Jesus said, if you have faith, you will tell this mountain to go in, to cast into the sea and it'll, it'll happen. Um, well, Jesus is making a point and uh, n neither Jesus nor the apostles nor anyone that I know of has ever moved the mountains into the sea. Um, so uh, clearly there's something more to what that statement that Jesus made than uh, th what they read into it. <clears throat> but faith does not create miracles. God creates miracles. And, and this is the thing, is that, and this is really the key. If we can just get to grips with this idea and understand this idea, and because this is, some, you know, if you were not contaminated by this word of faith stuff, um, you would say, well, of course, that's, that's the way it is. God heals. God blesses. God does things. Um, and, and that's it. Um, I can create nothing. I can do nothing outside of, of human, using human or, or, or demonic power. But, but other than that, I can do nothing. All I can do is to trust God. Now, I'd like for us to, to look, and I want to spend a, a bit of time in Hebrews 11, but I want to go to Hebrews 11, 11 to begin with. And I want you to, to, to pay careful attention to what's happening here. Um, By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past age. So it says that by faith, Sarah conceived and bore a child. Now, let me ask you this question, and, and I want you to think about this carefully. 
did Sarah believe she could have a child? And the answer is no. Because you remember what happened when, when God said to Abraham, and she's listening around the corner, and God says to Abraham in a year's time, she laughed. She did not believe she could have a child. She had no faith in her ability to have a child. So then why does the Bible then say that through faith she had a child? And the key is in the rest of the verse. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. This is, this is true faith in operation. I cannot do it, but God can. I cannot have a child, but God is faithful. And so she does not exercise her faith towards her dead womb. She exercises her faith towards God. Uh, Hebrews uh, 6, uh, the first or second verse, faith towards God. Our faith is not exercised towards our problems. Our faith is exercised towards God. And God does the miracle. God does whatever needs to be done or does not do so because, because obviously God is, is, is sovereign. So, so the wrong idea of faith, which these guys um, propagate, is that faith is like a, is like a little a dynamo that I have to turn. Um, and um, uh, when I was a kid these days, kids don't understand these things. But when I was a kid, we, I had a dynamo on my bicycle. Um, and that would generate power for the, for the headlight. And um, uh, for fun, we would turn the bicycle upside down and we would turn the thing faster and faster and get the light to burn brighter and brighter and brighter. And the, the harder you pedal, the brighter the light became. And this is their idea of faith, is the harder you work at this thing, the greater your faith and the greater the miracles. No, I, I just need enough faith to trust God. Faith is not a magic thing. It's simply trusting God that he is faithful. And when I trust him, God takes care of the rest. So, so faith is not about miracles. Faith is about two things. And I'm going to uh, look very briefly or maybe take a little bit of time uh, to look at Hebrews chapter 11 and just go through it very, very quickly and uh, look at and what faith produces. Now, the first thing that faith produces is obedience. Now, you'll never hear these guys talk about this. Faith produces them? No. Nowhere in Hebrews 11, if you read Hebrews 11 carefully, does it say that faith produces miracles. God did the miracles, but they obeyed him. And so if we go to verse 4, by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. He obeyed. By faith, Enoch was taken away. It wasn't his faith that took him away. If you read the verse carefully, it was by faith that he walked with God. Um, verse 7, by faith, Noah built the ark. By, verse 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place. By faith, verse 9, he dwelt in the land of promise. Obedience, obedience, obedience. Verse 11, by faith, Sarah bore a child. Um, and then, and then uh, by the way, uh, let me just interject this in verse 13. Um, you see, what these guys say is that if you are poor or if you are sick, you don't have faith uh, because faith must produce these miracles. But verse 13 says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises. So by the definition of the word of faith preachers, these saints, these heroes of faith in Hebrews 11 were failures because they did not receive the promises. But they saw them afar off and they were assured of them and they embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. Faith does not necessarily produce something here and now. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Uh, what a test of, uh, of obedience. Um, Verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed the sons of, of uh, Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, mentioned the departure of the children of Israel. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden. And so the list goes on and on and on. You can go by verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Now, again, if you, if you, uh, if you misinterpret the scripture, you say, well, you see there, by faith, the walls came down. No, 
What did they do? God said, march around the city for seven days and seven times on the seventh day. And by faith, they obeyed God and God took care of the walls of the city. So faith produces obedience. Faith produces obedience. And then the second thing, and this is, this is diametrically opposed to the whole concept of the word of faith, is that faith produces endurance in times of trial. They say faith gets you out of the difficulties. But that's not what the Bible says. Hebrews 11, verse 36. Still others have trial of mockings and scourgings. Yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted. They were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. These guys were losers as far as the word of faith guys are concerned. These guys just didn't make the grade. But the Bible says, of the whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and mountains, dens, caves of the earth, and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith. God testifies of them. These are the men that I identify with. Faith does not need, uh, 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 does not produce miracles. And if the, in the absence of miracles, the absence of financial prosperity, the absence of physical health does not mean that you have failed. And I know that there may be those who are watching today who say, well, you know, I just don't have the faith. I, I have a chronic illness. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm financially struggling. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a failure. No, you're not a failure. Um, it is not in your control to change these things. You need to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to put your trust in God, and God will take care of the rest. And, and it's, it's whether we are obedient. And when we are obedient, uh, things get hard. Uh, things don't get easy when we're obedient. But when things get hard, our faith sees us through because we're trusting God. We're not trusting in our results. We're not trusting in what we're able to bring about in this life. But our confidence is in God. And, and this, is, this is true faith. And, and I trust that you can see that this is, um, th this is very, very, very different to the kind of word of faith stuff uh, that is being propagated by many of these people today. Thank you, Anton. And that's amazing because we just cannot argue with scripture. Just a wee aside, showing my age here too, um, I remember Uri Geller well. However, um, I was doing some research for um, just for another program I'm producing, and um, I see that he's still uh, active in doing some of these amazing things. And he's been used in uh, experiments. I, I managed to get some footage of him uh, changing, um, reading pictures from another room and doing all kinds of unusual things uh, for the security services in America. Uh, part of uh, the big project of trying to um, have super soldiers who can use the power of the mind, as you call it, the soulish, you're absolutely right, the soulish power. So yes, these so-called magical things can be done, as you were saying, it is either demonic or it is by your own soulish power. This is not of the Holy Spirit. And uh, folks, Jesus never said that our walk would be easy. As Anton says, faith produces obedience. And with that obedience, as things do get tough, it, it, it produces endurance. And that is the hallmark of our walk. It is that endurance. So as he said, it isn't easy, but his yoke is light. Um, Anton, is there anything else you want to add? Um, thank you for expounding the scriptures in that, because that really is, that is what we use. That's the apologetic. It is the scripture and it's very clear. Word of faith is not of the Lord. Anything you want to add before we go? I think that just by in closing, we, we must read the scriptures. Um, don't listen to preachers that you don't know, that you can't trust. Read the word of God. And when you hear them make statements, go back and, and ask just simple questions. Is this the word of God? The, 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 the problem with these things is that I don't believe that most of these heresies, um, particularly word of faith, can be, can be caught. It is taught. 
In other words, you can't catch this heresy by reading the scriptures. You have to be taught how to pervert the scriptures to come to, uh, to these ideas. Now, the problem is, of course, that what, what, what I have and, and Deborah and others uh, who are trying to bring people back to the word of God is that we now have to undo all of this wrong thinking uh, just to get back to the simplicity of the word. Uh, because people's minds have been perverted. So read the scripture and ask the questions. Is this true? Is this so? Um, is this the way it really is? And as I said, you know, the whole argument about, the, uh, uh, about God's creative power, just read the first two chapters of, of the book of uh, Genesis and, and say, where is faith? Where does, it, it's just not there. Where is man made like, as little gods? It's just not there. Just read the word. Amen. Thank you, Anton. So our thanks indeed to Pastor Anton Bosch. So dear friends, uh, as always, I'd just like to remind you, be sure to avail yourselves. We've got over a thousand programmes here with sound teaching to help you educate yourself so that you're not at somebody else's mercy, as well as to be encouraged in your walk with the Lord here at globalvision.tv. There's also a link below to Anton's ministry Always check everything out with the scriptures. Check Anton and I out. Are we talking from the word of God or of something else? Only listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we do is free to view on YouTube and other platforms. So until next time, God bless. Bye-bye to now. Bye-bye. This is GV247.tv bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.tv, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>